Hey guys, what's up? It is the Unpro Pro, and welcome to uh, another episode of the RPG Maker VX Ace Tutorial Series, Season 2. This is Episode 9, I think. Quite sure. I'm... At least I'm almost positive it's Episode 9. Alright, so, uh, a few moments ago before I started this recording... Uh, never mind, it's fine. I was gonna say something about a spider, but I don't want to freak anybody out. So, um... Well, I think it's a spider, at least. I don't know. Anyways, enough about that. Let's go. Today we'll be covering the tile sets, and I want to go over the field type. The battle background is automatically determined by the tile where the player is standing when the battle occurs. This is called field type. Or it's not field type. Okay. Mode is area type or VX ace type. Or VX compatible type. Sorry, not VX ace. The map and its effects will be used for the battle background. Now, honestly, I can straight up and tell you. I honestly have no idea, like, why that is there. Like, I don't know what it does, like, in specific, but we're going to be creating our own little uh, tile set. We're going to name it Coolio. Like, if you want to go to it, you can change maximum and increase it by one. So we're going to name it Coolio, or you can name it whatever you want, really. But um, Okay, so you can see this is a field type, and this is an area type. Field type, though, is usually used for world maps. So if you're making, like, a world map tile set, then you're going to do field type. Well, right now, we're going to do area type. If you're using a VX tile set... Um, from the original, which is the uh, the father of this one, VX, uh, you would do VX compatible. Anyways, we're gonna do area type, and we're gonna do we're gonna double click this little uh, A1 animation. This is this is your your water and stuff similar to that. So this is gonna be your watery stuff. It's very watery. So I'm gonna give it the outside A1. Hmm. Let's give it the dungeon A1 water. I like that. A2, which is your ground, or well, A1 is animations. So if you want to make your own animation, it doesn't necessarily have to be water. It can be anything that's animated. But it's kind of tricky to do. As you can tell, this is how the setup looks. This is frame 1, frame 2, and frame 3. And it's divided by, this right here is divided into nine sections. Top left, top, top right, left, center, right, bottom left, bottom center, bottom right. And this right here is the things like if you kind of make a corner or a curve, to kind of fill in to where like it doesn't look like boxy. All right, so we're gonna click okay. Now we're gonna set the ground, which is A2. I'm gonna actually do the outside ground, outside A2. A3 buildings. Uh, hmm. These are the buildings. Let's see. All right. So yeah, we're gonna do um, A3. I think we only have one A3, it's the outside. Uh, A4 walls. These are walls and stuff. <laughs> so we're going to do inside A4. You can do inside, or I'm going to do outside. This is kind of a wacky tile set, so I'm going to kind of mix up everything so I can show you how things are done. A5 is the normal stuff, so you can have like dungeon, A5. These are just regular tiles that you can just stamp everywhere. They're not going to be auto-tiled. Uh... <laughs> Um, hmm. That's kind of World A2. Hmm, let's do... Let's do Inside A5, just for the heck of it, because it's so wacky. This is layer B. C, D, and E. Z right here, normally we have B over here in the uh, default world map. That's because this only has one thing. You can also enable C, D, and E by selecting the tile sets. So we're going to go to B, and we're going to give it Dungeon B. We're going to go to C. We're actually going to give it inside B. You can, it doesn't necessarily have to be a C. It can be anything. You can even do this, which, don't get me wrong, would look very wacky. And, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be animated. But you can do that if you wanted to. I'm going to do world B. I'm going to do outside B. So now we just have like this kind of wacky tile set with like all the different tiles. So if you want to click Apply. To make sure you say everything. Now, let me explain the passages, passage directions, ladders, bush, counter. I never use counter, so I don't really know what counter does. But I, okay. Enables a tile to start an event that is not directly next to it. Oh, okay. When a tile near the counter, wait, with a tile with a counter, it is between the character and the event. The character, it will start and the character right next to it. 
Oh, okay. So, oh, I will explain how this works really quick. I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, I'm going to make this little tile right here um, a counter. So let me go ahead and explain how that would work. And just to test it, we're going to make sure. So if you want to test your tile set, you right click on the map, go to map properties, and you select your tile set. You got Coolio. Now there won't be any walls yet, and for that I apologize, but, okay. So, say, there's like a fence right here. I don't know if this is going to work, I seriously don't, because I never used uh, the counter flag before, but we can try it. You guys don't have to copy what I'm doing, but I'm just showing you how it works, because you guys probably have no idea about events yet. If, yep, if I'm correct, yeah, you can face any direction. And um, if you have, like, somebody who's way in the background and you want to holler at them, like, if you want to say, hey, what are you doing back there? That's how you use your counter flag. And because as long as they're linked, see if you're on this. Okay. Okay, so it has uh, within one distance. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and try to explain that clearly now. Using the counter flag, if you're one distance ahead, if you're standing on... Okay, let me try to explain this. How can I do this? Give me a second, I will open up an image editor, because that would be a lot easier. Okay, so right now I'm using Microsoft Paint. So say your event is right here, and but you are right here on this tile. And there's another tile right here in front of you. If this tile that's in front of you is a counter flag, it's going to allow you to use this event. So this event's going to stretch over to that. And you're going to be able to activate that event right here. Now, the same thing goes with if you're on this side. It's going to stretch over to whatever the counter flag tile is. So you'd be able to so if you're here, this is you. You'd be able to t like to activate the event that's two tiles in front of you. If it's uh, if you're like about to run into a counter flag, so that's how that works. I literally just figured that out because I never really used it before, but you know, for the sake of the tutorial, I had to learn what it does. So, all right, so let's go back. Okay, the damage floor. If you step on this, you will take damage. <laughs> cool little spikes. Your character will take damage. So like this right here it used to be used for acid or something like that, or lava. You would do if you're stepping on lava, then you would you would take damage. Terrain tag, I let me read this. Assigns a numeric value between zero and seven to each tile. No specific uses are defined. The value can be obtained by using the get location info event command for terrain tags that are up uh, that that are obtained. Those upper wait those in the upper layers, except for zero, are prioritized. Okay, I've never used this. I don't think there's like too much of a use for this. So, unless you're a scripter, <laughs> which I'm not right now. All right. So, yeah, let me go over the passage. If it's X, you cannot cross it. If it's a circle, you can cross it. <laughs> now, if you're on layer B or C, D, or E, you're you're you'll have a star symbol. The star symbol means that you go underneath it. So, see this rock? We're going to make that a star by clicking or right clicking. Clicking moves it forward one and right clicking moves it backwards one. We're going to make the top of the rock a star so you can go behind it. The bottom of the rocks we're going to make an X so you can't pass them. So you can't go through them. It's, they, they stop you from moving like a wall. Normal rocks you, you can't step over. Stuff like this you could. Or maybe. So I'll leave that like that. Same thing that goes with for like trees or the, these things. You know, you want to make it where you can go behind them. Uh, like this, for example, if you're on the world map. Let me show you. See how this is set up? Okay, you can't go behind these for some reason. I don't know why that they didn't put it that way. Uh, see, like this right here, you can go through the volcano top. So you're going behind it. That's, that's how uh, the passage works. So when you're kind of creating your own tile set, make sure you can't go through the walls. So like when you're having walls, make sure it's an X, like so. It should automatically be set, you know, based on the thing it is. Uh, the buildings, for example. The walls and stuff will not. 
So you're going to want to set those to X's. I'm not going to do all these. But yeah, you're going to want to set those to X's. And now let's go over the passage direction. Passage direction is say you couldn't you could not pass here, right? Say you wanted to make a one direction thing. Uh you can't do it on these ones for some reason. See, so, um here's the normal tiles. Say you want one of these tiles, this one for example, down here. Say you wanted only to go right on it, and you would just select this little area. You can you can you can click right, left, down, or up, and wherever the arrows are is the direction that your character can go. So if he's on that tile, he can only move down. And in this case, now he can move down and up. So that's how the passage direction works. So you can you can make like a, a um a point of no return. Like a like a tile that points to the left. And you can make a good puzzle like that too. You can't move right on it, up or down. You can just move left. That'd make a good puzzle actually. The ladder excuse me. The ladder thing, how this works is if it's if you check it as a ladder the character will always face uh, forward while climbing on it to make it look like he's actually climbing. The bush, if you do this, the character kind of goes through the object. So like this, for example, the grass or even the water, if you want to be able to walk in the water, you can have the character kind of go through things to where it looks like he's standing in it. It's kind of cool. And... uh the counter flag I've already explained, damage floor and terrain tags I've explained. So that pretty much covers the tile sets. I'm going to click apply. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode.